and type 2 okay because type 3 system becomes pretty difficult to uh, uh, analyze using uh, handheld calculation so that's the reason we would be discussing only about type 0 type 1 and type 2 all right so let's consider these systems one at a time so let's start with a type 0 system type 0 system okay so the corresponding subheading you can say that uh, uh, analysis all right so we will try to analyze a type 0 system okay so you need to analyze this type 0 system okay this is your system against step input then ramp input and also parabolic input parabolic input okay all right so first let us start with a step input so when you consider step input the analysis become step analysis of type 0 system step analysis type 0 system okay so let's consider a type 0 system let us say g of into h of s these are open loop transfer function okay so let's consider type 0 system say 1 plus st1 1 plus st2 so and so forth so what do you mean by type of a system type of a system is identified by locating the number of poles at the origin right so for type 0 there shouldn't be any poles at the origin so in the denominator you will just have the time constant form say 1 plus es ta 1 plus es tb 1 plus es tc so on so forth okay as you can see there is no 1 by s term so that means to say it's a type 0 system all right so taking type 0 system in hand you can proceed to find the steady state error so next you write steady state error steady state error all right so our reference input is R of S is given as A by S. Correct. And the steady state error can be found by subjecting the error function to the limiting condition. That is, ESS is equal to limit S tends to 0, S into e of s right so e double s is equal to limit s tends to zero s into e of s what is e of s in the previous class we have seen right so in the previous class we had derived an expression for e of s so e of s is nothing but r of s divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s all right so one can estimate the steady state error simply by subjecting simply by subjecting the error signal to the limiting condition all right i hope you have uh, uh, noted down this uh, expression okay So, steady state error for a step input E double S is equal to limit S tends to 0, uh, S into E of S. E of S is R of S. What is R of S? For a step input, R of S is A by S divided by 
1 plus g of s into h of s. Okay. So yes, yes gets cancelled. So in the numerator, you are left with a, and in the denominator, you are left with 1 plus. Okay. So this is free of s. Numerator is free of s terms. So no point in uh, uh, exceeding the limit to the numerator. So what we can do is you can push the uh, limiting uh, uh, condition to the denominator. So here you can apply the limiting condition. Limit s tends to 0, g of s into h of s. Or, or the term limit s tends to 0, g of s into h of s can be taken as a constant kp, where kp is called as the static error coefficient, right? Positional error coefficient. Positional error coefficient. Is it clear? So if you substitute this kp in the main equation, you would get steady state error for a type 0 system under step input excitation is a divided by 1 plus k. So steady state error for a type 0 system under the excitation of a step input is a divided by k is equal to amplitude of the input. Amplitude of the input. Okay. So, what information it conveys? The information what it conveys is that any type 0 system, any type 0 system having uh, say 6 time constants in the numerator and let's say 12 time constants in the denominator always exhibits error of this kind. Of this kind. Okay. So, that's about the derivation part, and you can say that the error is finite. The error is finite. That means to say some finite number you are going to get. All right. Okay. Right. Um, Fine. Now, KP, we have written KP as limit S tends to 0, G of S into H of S. We have an expression for G of S into H of S, right? What is it? We have already expressed. G of S into H of S, for a type 0 system, we have taken K into 1 plus ST1, 1 plus ST2, so and so forth divided by 1 plus STA, okay, STA, into 1 plus STB, so on and so forth. Okay. Now you apply the limiting condition, okay, and see what you get as KP value. So KP is nothing but, okay, let me directly extend the limit. So K is independent of S, and what, what will happen is when you substitute S is equal to 0 in numerator and denominator, what happens is that all these S terms boils down to 0. S terms boils down to 0. Hence, in the numerator, you are left with K into 1 into 1, so on and so forth. Similarly, in the denominator, you will have 1 into 1 into so on and so forth. So basically, the positional error coefficient for a type 0 system under the influence of a step input is k. Now, what is k? k is generally the forward path, forward path amplifier gain. Amplifier gain. Okay. It could be a power amplifier or it could be a small signal amplifier. Doesn't matter. Okay, as a whole, you can say K is nothing but the 
forward path gain of the amplifier. Okay. So therefore, the steady state error for a type 0 system becomes 1 plus kp and it can also be written as a divided by 1 plus okay. kp you have okay. so from this expression it is very clear that your steady state error depends on k correct so in order to reduce the steady state error see steady state error is nothing but um, difference between actual output and uh, uh, um, expected uh, output value so if you want to minimize the steady state error one possibility is to increase the gain of the amplifier so what you can do is you can keep on increasing the gain of this amplifier so as you start increasing the gain what happens is that the denominator term you know starts getting bigger and bigger due to which the steady state error starts reducing looks pretty simple right increase again to reduce the steady state error however there's a trade off between uh, the steady state error and uh, stability what happens is that as you start increasing um, the gain of the amplifier on one side you may be experiencing a reduced steady state error but your system stability may go for a toss so that means to say a stable system can get into instability due to the increment in k value so this k basically imposes some constraints on uh, system stability okay so those constraints let's uh, deal in uh, uh, module 4 all right so at this juncture you please keep it in mind that if you just increase k value you know doesn't mean that your system remains uh, stable no it is not so all right so you should vary the value of k between uh, within a certain uh, uh, limit okay normally this k value will be specified by the designer so designer will uh, uh, tell us you know between uh, uh, this range you are supposed to uh, operate the k value all right so that's about um, the steady state error or a type 0 system under the influence of step input all right now in the similar way you can also find the steady state error uh, of a type 0 system where it uh, ram function and uh, the parabolic function okay so second case let's consider um, ram input ram input all right what do you mean by ram input the laplace description of ram input is R of s is equal to a divided by s square. All right, and we have seen for a ramp input, steady state error. Uh, I will not derive because it's been derived already. Steady state error is given as a divided by k. Correct. Other day uh, we discussed about it, where where k v is called as velocity error coefficient which is nothing but one of the static error coefficient. So KV is nothing but limit S tends to zero, S into G of S into H of S. So this is how we determine the value of KV. Let's see what KV value we, we would get. So KV is equal to limit S tends to zero, S into g of s into h of s okay so g of s into h of s is type 0 it's a type 0 specification so just substitute the type 0 uh, system uh, uh, transfer function so k into 1 plus st1 1 plus st2 so on and so forth divided by um, 1 plus S T A, 1 plus S T B, so on, so forth. Okay. All right.
Now, when you substitute the limit, what will happen? This becomes zero. This becomes zero. This becomes zero. So basically, you will get kV is equal to zero into k into one, so and so forth, divided by the denominator. KV value as you will get KV value as zero. So velocity error coefficient for a ramp input is equal to zero. Okay. If you get KV as zero, what happens to steady state error? Pretty interesting result you will get. So am I not audible? Am I not audible? Can anyone just text me? I heard that voice is breaking. OK. All right. Uh, e double S. Let me raise my voice. E double S is equal to A divided by K. So A divided by KV. What is KV? 0. So what is A by 0? Infinity. So steady state error. So the steady state error for a ramp input is basically infinite. Fine. This mathematics, okay, fine. You took some a by a square, did everything and you know. all. What exactly you understand from this expression? Let's say someone comes and asks you to test a, a type zero system. Um, for a ramp input, you don't have to test basically, right? Because from the mathematical analysis, we get this result stating that a type zero system under ramp excitation exhibits infinite error. So what's the point in testing? You will simply waste your uh, time. Okay. So this is the uh, what you say understanding uh, that you have to carry. All right. So you don't have to test. Uh, uh, type zero system against a ramp input uh, physically. Okay, you can directly say that it won't work. The system won't work for a ramp input. All right, fine. So that's about the analysis of type zero system for ramp input. All right. Graphical interpretation. Okay, let us draw graphical. Okay. So graphical interpretation. So, so far we discussed uh, step input and ramp input, right? So step input, let me consider here. And here let me consider ramp input. Okay. So graphical interpretation as in plot the variation of output with respect to time. And capture the information of stator uh, in these uh, graphs. Okay. So step input, this is your, I will not populate the graph, okay, since I have limited space. So blue line indicates uh, desired output. All right. And red line indicates actual output. This makes sense, right? Fine. So, in case of step input, you have obtained a finite error, which is a divided by 1 plus k. So, you are out. the desired output, say suppose in an underdamped manner. Okay. And this is your steady state error. So steady state error E double S is equal to A divided by 1 plus K. This is for a step input. On the other hand, 
for a ramp input, let's say this was our desired output. And in case of ramp input, we had seen that steady state error was infinite. So what happens is that as time t tends to infinity, the steady state error tends to be very, very large. Okay. So graphically, uh, you can plot something like this. So initially, it may be small. Okay. And then something like this. It just deviates from the expected value. All right. So you can that E double S tends to infinity as T tends to infinity. Okay. So this is how you can time. All right. So that's about the graphical uh, uh, in is it clear or you have any doubts? You can just know if you have any doubts. You can just uh, unmute and you can just uh, uh, raise your question. Okay. If you don't have any doubts, I will just uh, erase this. All right, so we are done with type zero system. Um, against uh, step and uh, RAM. The third one is parabolic input. For a parabolic input, R of S is A by S Q. So, Steady state error for a parabolic excitation is A divided by K. KA is called as acceleration error coefficient, and it can be given by limit S tends to 0, S square into G of S into H of S. Or you can estimate K value, KA is equal to limit s tends to 0, s square, and you substitute uh, type 0 uh, format of g of s into h of s, that is k into 1 plus st1, 1, 1 plus st2, so and so forth, divided by 1 plus sta into 1 plus stb, so and so forth. Okay, apply the limit, so this becomes 0. This, 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 all the S terms basically become zero. So KA, you will get it as K into zero into one into into one into one. So that gives a zero KA value. If you get A, your steady state error becomes A by zero right k a so a by zero is infinity again you don't have to test a type zero system for a parabolic input okay before testing itself we can say the system will not work the system you know uh, will be destroyed if you excite uh, the that particular system with a parabolic input. Basically, you will end up in destroying the system if you were to test against a parabolic input because it gives infinite steady state error. So your actual output may um, overshoot uh, the specification uh, and uh, eventually uh, it may uh, damage your system permanently. Okay. So that's your Time, the output. Okay, so parabola. Okay, uh, one degree higher than uh, the ramp input. Okay, 
see, in this region, you can say it is slightly lean, right? But here you have some exponential region, so which is nothing but a parabolic curve. Okay, and your actual output may move something of this kind. Okay, so what happens is that steady state error tends to infinity as t tends to infinity. Okay, so your system is basically unstable, you can say. Unstable. All right. So that's your type zero system analysis for step, ramp, and parabolic. Okay. Similarly, similarly, you know, you guys can do it with me quickly. You can finish off um, type one system. Do this. Type one system. Okay. Let's analyze a type one system. Let's see what kind of uh, uh, error we are going to get when we excite with uh, the standard. Step input, where R of S is equal to A by S. And then let us consider type one open loop transfer function. OLTF stands for open loop transfer function. So type one open loop transfer function goes like this, g of s into h of s is equal to, the numerator will not change, it remains the same, k into one plus s t one, one plus s t two, so on and so forth, divided by the denominator, okay. So it's a type one system, so you must have uh, one pole at the origin. So you will have one integrator. So one pole at the origin is nothing but one by S. So one by S is called as integrator. So for a type one system, you will have one integrator into the denominator time constant form, one plus STA, one plus STB, so on and so forth. Okay. So this is your Type one system description. Okay. Now let's calculate the steady state error. Okay. We know for a step input, steady state error is a divided by one plus kp, and kp is equal to limit s tends to zero g of s into h. Quickly tell me what is kp for a step input. Can anyone tell me? Anyone tell me? Siddharth, are you there? Or you have just uh, come online okay. and you are doing your work. Okay, KP is equal to nobody speaking. Oh, KP is equal to K into okay. all these terms become zero, 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 and zero. So KP is equal to K into one into one into divided by zero into one into one. So basically, you get K by zero form, which is infinity. So k by zero form you'll get, which is nothing but infinity. So positional error coefficient for a type one system is infinite. So when positional error coefficient is infinite, what happens to steady state error? Steady state error becomes a divided by or a divided by infinity, which is zero. Okay. Dividing a finite amplitude with infinite value gives a zero value. So that means to say a type one system 
against step input doesn't give any steady state error. That means to say the system, the actual output will find the desired value. Okay, so that is the understanding. Okay, so you can do the following graphical interpretation. Okay, so the result says E double S is equal to zero. That means to say steady state error is zero. So let's say this is your desired output. Okay. Desired output. Um, your actual output, I mean, considering underdone K, may undergo some sort of oscillations, but it, it is going to find its steady state value. So, steady state error is zero, right? Because your actual output. Value. So that is the desired output value. So steady state error is zero. Color indicates actual output. Actual output. Okay. So this is how you can uh, 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 graphically uh, carry out the interpretation. All right. So that's about uh, the step input uh, analysis of a type one system. Next, let us consider ramp input. Ramp input. So quickly, let input R of us R of yes is equal to A divided by S square. And E double S is equal to A divided by KV and equal to limit S tends to zero S into G of S into H of S. Or KV is equal to limit S tends to zero S into the G of S term, which is k into 1 plus st1, so on and so forth, divided by s into 1 plus st8, so on and so forth. So basically, yes, yes are going to get cancelled out from the numerator and denominator. And when you extend the limit, all yes terms becomes 0. So you would get kv as k into 1 divided by 1, which is k. So velocity error coefficient for a type 1 system is k, due to which you will get the steady state error as a by k. So you can say the type 1 system against a ramp input is finite. Error value you are going to get. Okay, so graphically, you can show something like this. So this is C of t. All right, so this is your expected value. So, and the actual value will be something like this. Something like this. So as time t tends to infinity, the steady state L settles down to uh, 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 this value. All right. So this is your E double S, the difference between actual and uh, desired output, E double S, which is A divided by K. So when you apply a final value theorem, you would see that your output settles down to some uh, steady value. So that's your uh, um, RAM input analysis of a type 1 system. Next, you consider the 
and tell me what you get for a parabolic input. So C parabolic. Alright, so R of S is A by SQ and uh, steady state error for a ramp input is A divided by KA and KA is equal to limit S tends to 0. S square g of s into h of s or k a is equal to limit s tends to 0 s square S square into the time constant. So you will have yes there in the numerator. When you extend the limit, you would get zero into k divided by. 1 into 1 into so on and so forth. So basically, you would get k as 0. That implies steady state error is a by k, which is equal to a by 0, which is equal to infinite. So type 2 system sorry, type 1 system against parabolic input gives infinite error, infinite error. So you don't have to test a uh, type 1 system against parabolic because it gives infinite error. Okay. So in a similar way, you can plot output versus time, desired output, and your actual output may be something of this kind. So E double S tends to infinity and T tends to infinity. So with respect to time, what happens is that the steady state error keeps on increasing. Okay. So that's your type one system analysis. Okay. Any doubt? Okay. If you have any doubts, uh, uh, please let me know. Okay. okay. So similarly, you can do for you can carry out the analysis for type two system. So in your syllabus, type zero, type one, and type two uh, systems are. Uh, let's do step input. Okay, so let me write the system description for type 2 system. Open loop transfer function g of s into h of s is equal to k into 1 plus st1, 1 plus st2, so and so forth, divided by. For a type 2 system, you must have two poles at the origin. So you will have two integrators, 1 by s into 1 by s. So two integrators into 1 plus STA, 1 plus STB, so on and so forth. All right. And then you consider step input. R of S is equal to A by S. And then you find KP. And then you find steady state error. OK, I'll not do it. E double S 
Uh, is the video stuck? Somebody is saying video is stuck. Can you just confirm whether it is stuck or not? Okay. So steady state error. Yeah, quickly calculate. Quickly calculate. I'll just write down the answers. I've done for two. I've done for two. So uh, you do it for at least a, a type two system. Okay. So ramp input. All right. And uh, parabolic input. A by S square, and for parabolic input, it is A by S cube. So just tell me these values. Okay, KP. Here you have KB, and here you have KA. Similarly, EWS for these. Okay, do it. Take about, say, one or two minutes of time and check what sort of static error coefficients you are going to get and what kind of steady state error you are going to get. So today I'll be circulating the nodes of module three, that is time response of system. Yeah. So Dior was Dior has come up with the answer. Try point, where is try two? Okay, try two is here. So KP is infinite, correct? And steady state error is zero. Just tell me whether it is right or wrong. And for a ramp input, KV is infinite. And steady state error will be um, zero. Okay, one by infinity you will get, that is zero. And for a parabolic input, Ka is K, and steady state error is A by K. Is it correct? Just let me know. Okay. Type two system description is here. Just let me know. You can just uh, drop a message in the uh, message box, whether it is right or wrong. OK. All right. In the end, what you have to do is you have to just uh, uh, make a summary of this. I don't want to write it. I'm feeling very bored to write. Okay, what you have to do is you have to just uh, collect the results and uh, you know uh, make a table of uh, this kind. Okay, so on one side you write system type that is type zero, type one, type two, and on the other side you can collect error coefficient information and steady state error. Okay, so you can make a kind of uh, uh, table. Okay. So to collect the results, it's just a substitution. Okay, nothing else. Fine. And what you need to do is the graphical interpretation. I'm not going to draw for type two system. You try out with yourself. Okay, you please try it out. Graphical. Interpretation. Okay, please try out on your own graphical interpretation. Okay. So, any doubts till now? Okay. If you don't have doubts, um, I can take some problem. At least one problem I want to finish. Okay. 
see the summary of this uh, analysis of system type is that um, as a designer or sorry as a tester you know you can decide whether i have to test this particular system or not okay because the math analysis are known in prior having known the mathematical analysis you can take a call whether to have to whether uh, you need to go ahead with the testing or not okay so that's the uh, understanding of uh, uh, system analysis all right so let us consider a practical system okay i'll not do any steady state error uh, uh, problem uh, let me do an analysis of a practical system consider a uh, rc circuit single stage rc circuit some input vi of t and let's say the response is captured across the capacitor r all right i'll write it in laplace domain vi of s v not of s and capacitor let me write it as 1 by cs and let's say current is i of s now the question is what type of what type of a uh, system Okay, what type of a system is this, and how how the variation of C of t takes place with respect to time t? All right. So these are the objectives. You need to determine. the type of a system what type of a system is okay when when you are vi of to step in okay. when amplitude one that means to say a unit step function okay so you have a single rc network excited by a step input and you are supposed to find the type of a system and also you need to determine the variation of output with respect to time all right so quickly you first find out the mathematical model okay that is ratio of output to input okay so output is v not of s so which is nothing but laplace impedance 1 by cs into current i of s divided by vi of s which is nothing but um r plus 1 by cs into i of s you simplify is equal to uh okay just check what do you get v not by vi as you get a time constant form so basically you will get 1 divided by 1 plus Yes, into R C. This check. Yeah, because this C S, this C S gets cancelled, and when you take the L C M, you would get one plus C S into R. Okay, so this is your transfer function. Okay, once the transfer function is known, you can find V not of S. So V not of S is equal to V I of S. Into the transfer function, one plus S yes into R C. Okay. So V not of S is equal to multiply input times the transfer function. Okay. Now input description is given. 
right? Input description is a step input. So V naught of yes, I can write it as um, one by yes into one divided by one plus yes into RC. Yes into RC. Okay. So how do you find C of T? C of T is nothing but C. C of T is nothing but for our case, it is V naught of T. That means to say you need to determine the output with respect to time. But here you have kind of convolution, right? One by S into uh, the second term. So you cannot directly apply the Laplace transformation. What you have to do is you have to apply partial fraction method to segregate the terms. So applying, applying partial okay. So when you apply partial fraction method, you can write V naught of yes is equal to okay whatever this uh, I'll write it as it is first one by s into one plus s r c okay which is equal to let us factorize the terms let us segregate the terms a by s the first factor plus b divided by the second factor which is one plus s into r c so this is my far partial fraction method. Now you determine the coefficients of A and B. So to determine the coefficients of A and B, what you can do is put first, okay, there are two factors, right? You equate first term to zero, you would get S is equal to zero. All right. And then you equate second term to zero. So you would get S is equal to minus Substitute s is equal to zero. Okay, you would get the v naught of s is equal to. Okay, I'll just take LCM. So it is a into one plus s r c plus b s divided by s into one plus s r c. Okay, so LHS instead of v naught of s, um, let me take it as say v naught of s is equal to this one a by s plus uh, b divided by 1 plus s r c and then the uh, equal sign okay so what do you get when you substitute s is equal to 0 so this becomes 0 and this becomes 0 and when you compare you would get uh, a is equal to 1 so when you put s is equal to 0. This term is 0, this term is 0. So a into 1. And if you compare with the LHS, I mean, this side, OK, this is, you will get a is equal to 1. OK. Similarly, similar, when you put, when you put s is equal to minus 1 by rc. Basically, you are equating 1 plus s rc to 0. So 1 is equal to negative s rc or s is equal to negative uh, 1 by rc. So when you put s is equal to minus uh, 1 by rc, you would get um, whatever v naught of s is equal to a into 1 and you are putting s is equal to minus rc. So minus 1 by rc into rc minus b into 1 by rc so rc rc gets cancelled so 1 minus 1 is 0 so this first factor becomes 0 so basically you will get when you compare the coefficients you would get 1 is equal to minus 1 by rc that is t is equal to negative rc so Coefficient of A is 1 and coefficient of B is. So once you have these coefficients, you can complete the output description, which is V naught of S 
is equal to a by s, right? What do we have against a? Unity. So 1 by s plus b divided by 1 plus s into rc. Against b, we have rc divided by 1 plus s into rc. So what I will do, I will try to keep this in, this in standard form. So I'll just convert this into standard form. So first term, I'll keep it as it is, 1 by s minus, OK. Let me take out rc common from the numerator and denominator. So I'll be left with 1 divided by s plus 1 by rc. OK. Now I have the addition term, additive terms. Now I can apply the Laplace. I mean, inverse Laplace transform. So, inverse Laplace transform. So, Laplace inverse of V naught of S, which is equal to Laplace inverse of 1 by S minus Laplace inverse of 1 divided by s plus 1 by rc okay which is equal to okay inverse laplace of v naught of s is v naught of t equal to laplace inverse of 1 by s what is it 1 by s is unit step function so the time domain counterpart is unit 1 minus so you have a standard relation inverse laplace of 1 divided by s plus a if you have a, a function of f of s is equal to 1 divided by s plus a then inverse laplace minus a into t where a being the coefficient okay so similarly you can write 1 minus e to the power minus what is a? It is 1 by rc. So it is 1 by rc into t. So this is your variation of output with respect to time. So your output, if you inspect closely, your output is consisting of two terms. First term, okay, the first term is free from t term. That means to say, the first term is steady state value. So it gives steady state value of output, independent of time. So it is the DC value. The second term is depending on time. So you can call it as a transient term. Transient term. This is what we were discussing in the introduction. Any output, you know, most likely to have uh, two parts, the steady state part and transient part. So steady state part is independent of T and transient part is dependent on, dependent on T. Okay. Fine. So that's the equation for output. All right. Now, how do we represent the output that is v naught of t with respect to time? Okay. So first, what you have to know is that whether the output is finding the steady state value or not. Yes, it does because the steady state value is unity. So what you have to do is you have to first draw the final value. So this basically represents final value, which is also called a steady state value. All right. So output is going to how the output is going to approach the final value, right? So output is going to approach the final value in an exponential way because the transient term is consisting of an exponential function. So basically what happens is that as time t 
starts increasing okay as time progresses what happens is that you know your output the transient term slowly starts decaying in an exponential manner and eventually at some time it will find its steady state value so this term is basically the exponential term e to the power minus um, 1 by rc into t okay if you want to find out you can just do it okay there's no big deal t and uh, um, you can write v naught of t so you can take t as say rc to rc 4 rc and then you find out v naught of t 1 minus whatever e to the power minus t divided by rc just substitute you will get uh, uh, different values so if you were to place these points you would have got the points in this manner basically you would have uh, ended up in tracing an exponential decay graph so your transient term slowly you know decays and finally settles down to the final value so this is what uh, is called as the variation of output with respect to time i hope it's uh, clear okay this is how we uh, find out the time response okay so we can say the system is stable in the sense the system is finding its steady state value which is unity okay so in this problem we have considered unit step function instead of unit step function if at all you had been given with an input with amplitude a then you will, your output would have been simply this times a okay this is called as scaling scaling so you can just uh, scale up the output by multiplying with the amplitude of the input all right so that concludes uh, your um, the analysis of type 0 type 1 and type 2 uh, i hope that you have understood if you have any doubts you know you can let me know over whatsapp or uh, text messages all right and uh, for tomorrow's class uh, let's solve some problems on steady state error all right so that's all if you have doubts you can stay back if you don't have doubts you can uh, uh, quit the meeting all right thank you If you have doubts, please let me know. I will wait for some time.